in the quaint suburb of Eldritch Grove, where every house boasted well-tended gardens and white picket fences, the arrival of the new neighbor at 322, Hawthorne Lane was the talk of the town. No one had seen him move in, yet overnight, the once derelict house seemed inhabited, its windows flickering with dim, ghostly light. The nameplate read simply, Dr. Mordecai Solomon. Sylvia Carter, a retired schoolteacher and self-proclaimed protector of neighborhood norms, was the first to notice the odd occurrences. During her morning walks, she saw shadows flitting behind the curtains, heard strange whispers on the wind, and felt eyes watching her from the darkened windows of Dr. Solomon's house. Each time she tried to introduce herself, the door would open slightly, only to slam shut with no one in sight. Strange, isn't it? How he never comes out, nor receives anyone. Sylvia murmured to her friend, Judith, over tea one cloudy afternoon. Indeed, but it's his constant digging in the backyard at odd hours that unnerves me, Judith replied, her voice barely a whisper, as if afraid of being overheard. Their curiosity turned to unease when pets in the neighborhood began to disappear, only to reappear days later, inexplicably terrified and refusing to go near Hawthorne Lane. Whispers of the supernatural began to circulate, stoked by the eerie aura that seemed to emanate from the house. One foggy evening, Michael, a local teenager, dared his friends during a game of truth or dare to sneak into Dr. Solomon's backyard. Trembling with a mix of fear and excitement, they crept through the gate, their flashlights casting ominous shadows. What if he's some sort of mad scientist, giggled Sarah, trying to lighten the mood. Or a warlock, summoning something wicked, Michael countered, his voice tinged with mock horror that failed to mask his genuine fear. As they approached the rear of the garden, they stumbled upon a series of freshly dug holes, some shallow, others disturbingly deep and wide. A chill ran down their spines when they found a small, antique locket half buried near one of the pits. The locket was warm to the touch, its surface engraved with symbols that seemed to shift and change under the moonlight. Suddenly, the back door creaked open, and a tall, thin silhouette appeared. Dr. Solomon stood there, his eyes gleaming unnaturally in the darkness. Why do you trespass here, children? His voice was soft yet carried an underlying threat that sent them scrambling over the fence in terror. The next day, Sylvia, driven by a mix of concern and fear for the neighborhood children, decided to confront Dr. Solomon. She marched up to his door, her heart pounding in her chest, and rang the bell. After what felt like an eternity, the door opened a crack, revealing a sliver of his gaunt face. Dr. Solomon, I'm Sylvia Carter from next door. We're quite concerned about disturbances, she stammered, her usual confidence wavering. Ah, Mrs. Carter, I've been expecting you, he replied, his voice dripping with a chilling amiability that did not reach his cold eyes. Why don't you come in? I think it's time we had a talk about what's really happening in Eldritch Grove. With a sense of dread, Sylvia stepped inside. The door closed behind her with a definitive thud, enveloping her in the house's suffocating darkness. Inside, Dr. Solomon led her through a labyrinth of dimly lit hallways, the walls adorned with bizarre, ancient artifacts and books and languages she couldn't comprehend. The air was thick with the smell of incense and something faintly metallic. Please, have a seat, he gestured towards a chair in what appeared to be his study. As Sylvia sat, she noticed a large, covered cage in the corner of the room, shaking intermittently as if something alive was trapped inside. Dr. Solomon, what is going on here? People are scared, she said, her voice steady despite her pounding heart. All in good time, Mrs. Carter. You see, there is a history to this house, to this land, that predates any of us. What you perceive as horror is merely misunderstanding, he explained, his eyes glinting with an unsettling fervor. As he spoke, the covered cage began to shake violently. Sylvia's eyes were drawn to it, her mind racing with terrifying possibilities. You're not just a simple neighbor, are you? She whispered, fear gripping her. Dr. Solomon smiled, a sinister, knowing smile that chilled her to the bone. 
No, Mrs. Carter, I am not. And what I am about to show you will change everything. You believe about Eldritch Grove, Dr. Solomon said, his voice dropping to a whisper that seemed to echo around the room, even as the shadows seemed to lean in closer, listening. Sylvia swallowed hard, her eyes fixed on the covered cage as it continued to rock and shudder. What is that? she asked, unable to hide the tremor in her voice. All in due time, Dr. Solomon replied, his eyes never leaving hers, first, you must understand the true nature of what lies beneath this town. He walked slowly to a bookshelf, his fingers tracing the spines of ancient, leather-bound books until he selected one. The book looked old, its cover a tapestry of intricate designs that seemed to move subtly under the dim light. He handed it to her, the pages cool and slightly sticky under her fingertips. This land was once sacred, a nexus of energies that the ancients believed could bridge the worlds of the living and the dead, Dr. Solomon began, his voice low and hypnotic. When the settlers came, they built over these sacred sites, ignorant of the forces they were disturbing. Sylvia's eyes widened as she flipped through the pages, seeing diagrams of elaborate rituals and maps of the area that included sites she recognized as parts of modern Eldritch Grove. Her heart raced, not just from fear, but from a burgeoning curiosity that felt almost like a betrayal of her instincts to flee. Why are you telling me this? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Because, Mrs. Carter, you and the others have been experiencing the consequences of a century-long disturbance, he explained, turning to look at the cage again. What resides within that cage is not something I control, but rather, something I am trying to understand and contain. As if on cue, the cover of the cage fell away, revealing a creature that defied logical explanation. It was small, perhaps the size of a large rabbit, but it was covered in scales that shimmered with an ethereal light. Its eyes were large and black, devoid of irises, and when it moved, it seemed to phase in and out of reality, like a glitch in the fabric of the universe. Sylvia gasped, stepping back instinctively. The creature fixed its gaze on her, and in its eyes, she saw images flash, the townspeople going about their daily lives, unaware of the shadows that moved just beyond their sight, ancient rituals performed by hooded figures, and a dark, swirling vortex that seemed to pulse with malevolent energy. It's a guardian, Dr. Solomon said, reading the confusion and horror on her face. Or it was, before the balance was disrupted. It's bound to this land, and its agony has been felt through the subtle disturbances you've all noticed. But why show this to me? Sylvia managed to say, her mind reeling from the visuals still flickering in the creature's eyes. Because I believe you can help, Mrs. Carter, he replied, his tone earnest. You are a pillar of this community, someone who sees and understands more than most. Together, we can restore the balance, calm the guardian, and put an end to the disturbances. Silva marveled at the proposition, fear and responsibility warring within her. And if we don't, she asked, dreading the answer. The disturbances will grow, becoming more frequent, more dangerous. The veil between worlds will thin, and what comes through may not be as benign as our guardian here. The implications of his words hung heavy in the air, and Sylvia felt the weight of a decision she never expected to make. Could she really turn away now, knowing what she did? Outside, the wind picked up, howling around the house as if in warning. Dr. Solomon walked over to the window, peering out into the gathering darkness. There's a storm coming, Mrs. Carter, he said, turning to face her again, his expression grave. And I'm not just talking about the weather. Will you help me? Sylvia looked from Dr. Solomon to the creature, which now seemed more pitiful than frightening, and nodded slowly. Yes, she whispered, I'll help you. Good, Dr. Solomon smiled, though there was no joy in it. We'll need to prepare. There's much to do and little time. As they began to discuss their next steps, the creature in the cage watched them, its black eyes glinting with an intelligence and sadness that was almost human. Outside, the first drops of rain began to fall, each one hissing as it hit the ground, 
as if the very earth itself was protesting what was to come. And so, under the gathering storm, Sylvia and Dr. Solomon plotted to save Eldritch Grove, unaware of the true magnitude of the forces they were about to confront. The wind outside held with a ferocity that seemed almost supernatural, echoing the mounting tension inside the dimly lit study of Dr. Solomon's mysterious and foreboding house. As Sylvia sat, her mind swirling with the unimaginable realities she had been thrust into, Dr. Solomon began to meticulously lay out the artifacts and ancient texts he had collected over the years, each piece seemingly connected to the hidden energies of Eldritch Grove. These artifacts, Dr. Solomon explained, his fingers delicately brushing against a small, stone tablet inscribed with unreadable script, are keys, Mrs. Carter, keys that unlock barriers between our world and what lies beyond. Our first task will be to decipher these inscriptions, to understand how we can use them to restore balance. Sylvia, though overwhelmed, felt a surge of purpose, the gravity of their undertaking lending her a resolve she hadn't known she possessed. And the Guardian, she asked, her voice steady despite the palpable air of dread that filled the room, how do we calm such a creature? Dr. Solomon paused, his eyes darkening with the weight of his knowledge. It is bound to this land, its essence linked to the ley lines that converge beneath this very house. We need to perform a ritual, one that will soothe its spirit and repair the fractures in the veil that separates our worlds. As they spoke, the creature in the cage began to stir again, its movements slow and pained, as if it were struggling against unseen bonds. Sylvia couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for the beast, its plight mirroring the disturbance of the once peaceful town. Tonight, Dr. Solomon continued, when the moon is at its zenith, we will begin. The alignment is critical, it will amplify the energies we need to tap into. Sylvia nodded, her mind racing with the enormity of the night ahead. The hours passed as they prepared, drawing intricate symbols around the house and setting the artifacts at precise points. Outside, the storm grew in intensity, the wind screaming like the cries of the damned, adding a sinister chorus to the night's eerie proceedings. As midnight approached, Sylvia and Dr. Solomon positioned themselves in the center of a large, chalk-drawn pentagram in the basement, the Guardian's cage at its heart. Dr. Solomon handed Sylvia a small, silver dagger, its handle cold and heavy in her hand. This, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, will serve as a conduit for your energy. Do not fear, the blade is not for harm, but for protection and focus. Sylvia's hand trembled as she took the dagger, her heart pounding in her chest as the reality of what they were about to attempt sank in. Dr. Solomon began to chant in a language she didn't understand, his words seeming to twist and warp the very air around them. The basement filled with a palpable energy, a thrumming that resonated with Sylvia's own heartbeat. The artifacts glowed faintly, each pulse growing stronger, sinking with the cadence of Dr. Solomon's chants. Suddenly, the creature in the cage shrieked, a sound so filled with pain and fear that it pierced Sylvia's soul. The room seemed to spin, the walls stretching and contracting as if breathing. Shadows danced at the edges of her vision, forming shapes that were too grotesque to fully comprehend. Focus, Mrs. Carter. Dr. Solomon shouted over the roar of the wind and the creature's cries. Focus your energy through the dagger. Sylvia closed her eyes, her mind concentrating on the weight of the dagger in her hand, the symbols beneath her feet, and the desperate desire to restore peace. The air crackled with power, the edges of her vision sparking with white, hot light. Then, as suddenly as it had begun, everything stopped. The wind ceased, the creature's cries faded, and the oppressive energy that had filled the room dissipated. Sylvia opened her eyes to find the basement silent and still, the only sound their heavy breathing. Dr. Solomon, looking older and more fatigued than she had ever seen him, slowly stood from where he had knelt. We've done it, he said, a faint smile touching his lips. We've calmed the Guardian. But even as he spoke, Sylvia felt a chill crawl up her spine. The silence was too deep, the calm too sudden. As she turned to look at the cage, she realized it was empty, the creature was gone. Dr. Solomon, she whispered, 
panic rising in her voice. Where is the guardian? Dr. Solomon's eyes widened in sudden fear, and he rushed to the cage, inspecting the locks and the surrounding area. It's not possible, he murmured, the ritual was supposed to bind it here, to soothe it. But the empty cage said otherwise. Sylvia and Dr. Solomon looked at each other, the same dread filling their hearts. The creature had escaped, and now, unbound and perhaps even angrier than before, it could be anywhere, perhaps everywhere, at once. Dr. Solomon frantically flipped through his ancient texts, his fingers trembling as he searched for any clue that might tell them what had gone wrong. Sylvia, this is far worse than I imagined, he said, his voice crackling with urgency. The Guardian wasn't just contained, it was a keystone holding back something much darker. If it's free, then there's no telling what it might unleash. Outside, the world seemed eerily silent, the storm's rage having abruptly ceased, leaving a suffocating stillness that pressed in on the house. Sylvia felt her pulse quickening, her senses heightened to every small sound, the distant creak of a tree branch, the subtle shift of the house settling, the soft, sinister whisper of wind through cracked windows. We need to find it, and quickly, Dr. Solomon said, snapping the book shut. I have a locator spell, but it requires a personal item of the Guardian. Something it was attached to. Sylvia's mind raced. The locket. The one the children had found in the garden. She relayed her thought to Dr. Solomon, who nodded, his eyes lighting up with a flicker of hope. Yes, perfect, he exclaimed. Bring it to me, quickly. Sylvia hurried to retrieve the locket from where it lay discarded on a dusty shelf. The moment she touched it, a cold shiver ran down her spine, as if the locket itself disapproved of her handling. She rushed back to Dr. Solomon, who had already begun to prepare the locator spell. The basement was transformed once again into a chamber of arcane energies as Dr. Solomon positioned the locket at the center of a new array of symbols and began chanting. The air thickened, swirling with visible currents of energy that coalesced around the locket. Suddenly, the locket levitated, spinning slowly in the air before shooting towards the eastern wall of the basement, smashing against it with such force that it left a small dent. The locket fell to the floor, quivering like a compass needle. It's east, Dr. Solomon said, his voice tight with concern. It's heading towards the town center. Without another word, Sylvia and Dr. Solomon gathered a few necessary items, salt, the silver dagger, and several protective amulets, and hurried outside. The night was unnaturally quiet, the moon a mere sliver in the sky, casting minimal light over the shadowed landscape. As they moved through the streets of Eldritch Grove, Sylvia's heart pounded in her chest. The town looked different at night, shadows stretching long and twisted, turning familiar pathways into sinister trails. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, heightened the tension that gripped her. They followed the path indicated by the locket, each step taking them closer to the town center. The air grew colder, a mist beginning to rise from the ground, swirling around their ankles like grasping fingers. Finally, they arrived at the town square, the site of the original settlement of Eldritch Grove, where the energies were said to be the strongest. The square was empty, the usual nighttime revelers absent, as if even the town itself knew to stay away. There, Dr. Solomon pointed towards the old town hall, a building that had stood since the colonial times, now abandoned and in disrepair. It must be there. As they approached the building, the air grew even colder, the mist thickening into an almost opaque fog. Sylvia clutched the silver dagger tightly, her other hand gripping a flashlight whose beam seemed to struggle against the overwhelming darkness. They stepped inside the town hall, the door creaking ominously as it swung open. Inside, the air was stale, heavy with the scent of mold and decay. Their footsteps echoed in the vast emptiness of the lobby, a sound that seemed to be swallowed by the shadows. Sylvia, be on your guard, Dr. Solomon whispered, his eyes scanning the dark corners of the room. It could be anywhere. They moved cautiously, checking each room, finding nothing but the detritus of years of neglect 
broken furniture, piles of rotting books, and layers of dust that testified to the building's long abandonment. But as they reached the main assembly hall, the air shifted, charged with an electric tension that made the hairs on Sylvia's neck stand on end. Suddenly, the door slammed shut behind them, plunging them into darkness. The flashlight flickered, casting erratic shadows against the walls, as if the darkness itself was alive, moving, encroaching. Sylvia, stay close, Dr. Solomon said, his voice barely audible over the sound of their ragged breaths. As their eyes adjusted to the dim light, they noticed the faint outline of the walls, etched with ancient symbols that seemed to pulse faintly in the shadowy light. The symbols were similar to those in the texts Dr. Solomon had shown Sylvia earlier, each one a marker of the old magic that had once governed these lands. Suddenly, a low growling echoed through the hall, a sound so primal and alien that it froze them in their tracks. The growl seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere, filling the space with dread. The air grew colder still, breath visible in the chilling atmosphere. This is it, Dr. Solomon whispered, his voice tense. It's here. The growling intensified, a sound not just heard but felt, vibrating through their very bones. From the far end of the hall, a pair of luminous, eerie eyes appeared, glowing with an unnatural light. The creature from the cage, now free and unrestrained, advanced towards them slowly, its form shifting and shimmering as if still not fully bound to this world. We need to contain it, Dr. Solomon shouted over the growl, pulling a circle of salt from his pocket and beginning to spread it in a wide arc around them. Sylvia, though paralyzed with fear, forced herself to move, helping him to complete the circle just as the creature approached the edge of the salt barrier. It stopped abruptly, as if unable to cross. The creature's eyes, dark and endless, fixed on Sylvia, and in them, she saw not just malevolence, but pain and confusion. It was trapped, caught between worlds and tormented by forces it could not understand. Dr. Solomon began to chant, his voice steady and commanding. The air inside the circle they stood in became warmer, the oppressive cold pushed back by the power of his words. Sylvia, guided by instinct, lifted the silver dagger and pointed it towards the creature, her arm steady despite the tremor in her soul. By the light of the ancients, by the boundary of salt, I command you to return. Dr. Solomon's voice rose to a crescacular crescendo, filling the hall with a resonant power. The creature howled, a sound of anguish and rage that shook the windows. But slowly, it began to recede, its form dissolving into the air, like mist being burned away by the rising sun. The glow from its eyes faded, and the growling diminished, until all that was left was the silence of the empty hall. They both collapsed, exhausted and spent, the adrenaline that had fueled them ebbing away. Dr. Solomon looked at Sylvia, his eyes filled with a mix of relief and sorrow. It's done, he said softly. The Guardian is at peace, the veil restored. Sylvia nodded, feeling the weight of their ordeal settle around her. They had faced something unimaginable, a remnant of ancient times when the world was wilder, and the boundaries between realms were thin. As they left the town hall, the first light of dawn was touching the horizon, casting long shadows on the ground. The town of Eldritch Grove was still, as if holding its breath, but as the sun rose, life began to stir once again. People emerged from their homes, looking around as if waking from a long, troubled sleep. Sylvia and Dr. Solomon walked back to Hawthorne Lane in silence, each lost in their thoughts. The events of the night had changed them, binding them to each other and to the town in ways they could not yet fully understand. As they reached Dr. Solomon's house, he turned to Sylvia, a serious expression on his face. There will be more to do, he said. The Guardian was but one piece of a larger puzzle. The energies of this land are old, and not all are so benign. Sylvia nodded, feeling the truth of his words deep in her bones. I'm ready, she said, a newfound resolve in her voice. Whatever comes, we'll face it together. Dr. Solomon smiled, the first genuine smile she had seen from him, and together, they stepped into the house, 
ready to face whatever mysteries and dangers lay ahead, their journey far from over. As Sylvia and Dr. Solomon entered the dimly lit study, the morning light struggling to pierce the thick curtains, they felt a momentary reprieve from the night's horrors. The house seemed to sigh with them, its walls echoing with the faint whispers of its ancient past. They sat in silence for a long time, each processing the ordeal and its implications. Finally, Dr. Solomon, his features more somber than ever, broke the quiet. We've staved off the immediate threat, Sylvia, but Eldritch Grove will always be a place of power and danger. Our work has just begun. Sylvia nodded, her resolve hardened by the night's events. I understand. What's the next step? She asked, her voice steady despite the lingering fatigue. We must research more, Dr. Solomon replied, opening an old, leather-bound book. We need to understand not only what we are dealing with, but also how to protect this town permanently. There are other entities, other energies that may not be as contained as we hope. As they delved into the ancient texts, the hours passed unnoticed, the sun climbing higher in the sky. Outside, the town of Eldritch Grove began to buzz with its usual daily rhythm, seemingly oblivious to the thin veil that had almost been torn apart. Days turned into weeks, and Sylvia and Dr. Solomon became a familiar duo, seen often poring over books and artifacts, or walking the ley lines that crisscrossed the town, their tools and instruments in hand. The townspeople, initially wary, began to regard them with a mixture of respect and relief, understanding that their presence held back the darkness that lurked just beyond sight. One chilly evening, as autumn leaves began to carpet the town in hues of orange and red, Sylvia and Dr. Solomon stood atop the small hill overlooking Eldritch Grove. They had just finished setting up the last of the wards, a series of stones imbued with ancient runes designed to strengthen the veil. Dr. Solomon looked over the town, his eyes reflective. You've done well, Sylvia. Thanks to you, the balance is maintained, for now. Sylvia followed his gaze, feeling a deep connection to the place she had always called home, now so much more meaningful. It feels like we're just caretakers, she mused. Caretakers of a secret that this town doesn't even know it holds. That's often the way of such truths, Dr. Solomon remarked. Better hidden, yet vigilantly guarded. As they made their way down the hill, the setting sun cast long shadows through the trees, and a cold wind whispered through the leaves, carrying with it a hint of warning. Sylvia shivered, not just from the cold, but from the realization that their work would never truly be done. Months passed, and the town remained peaceful. Sylvia continued her studies with Dr. Solomon, her knowledge of the arcane growing deeper with each passing day. The townspeople, too, seemed to accept the slightly eccentric pair, their strange habits and nocturnal wanderings now just another part of Eldritch Grove's charm. But the peace was not to last. One foggy morning, as Sylvia walked the path through the town square, she felt a sudden chill, a drop in temperature that was out of place even in the cool autumn air. The birds had stopped singing, and there was a stillness that made her heart beat faster. Rushing to Dr. Solomon's house, she found him in his study, a look of grave concern on his face. It's happening again, he said without needing to explain further. They both felt it, a shift in the energy, a thinning of the veil they had worked so hard to fortify. Together, they prepared once more, gathering their tools and knowledge like shields against the coming storm. The town of Eldritch Grove, blissfully unaware, continued its daily rhythm, leaving Sylvia and Dr. Solomon to confront the darkness on their own. As they walked towards the heart of the disturbance, the ground beneath their feet trembling with untold power, Sylvia felt a fierce determination. Whatever came, they would face it together, protectors of the hidden truth, guardians of the boundary between worlds. The air crackled with energy as they reached the old town hall, the epicenter of the disturbance. Sylvia, with a calm born of countless such confrontations, began the incantations, Dr. Solomon supporting her with chants of his own. The air around them shimmered, and for a moment, the veil lifted, revealing the swirling chaos of otherworldly energies clawing at the edges of reality. 
With a final, resounding declaration, Sylvia drove the energies back, reinforcing the barrier with all her might. The ground stilled, the air cleared, and the veil closed once more. Exhausted but triumphant, they returned to their sanctuary, the town hall fading into the mist behind them. As they left, a single, whispered word echoed through the 